Hello, my name is uh, Marcos Vargas. I am a faculty member at the University of Iowa. I've been there for uh, 27 years. And today my topic is shade selection for resin composites. So um, what I wanna transmit today is a little bit different things. Um, I'm going to tell you what I know, what I believe, what I do in my practice. It's one of the things that I teach at the University of Iowa with the students, grad students, and when I go and do courses, the cases you're going to be seeing is cases that I do every day in my practice. Uh, there is no alteration, there is no um, Photoshop or anything of the dental work. And to me, the most important uh, thing today is I wanna teach you a technique, an easy, a predictable um, shade selection you can use in your practice tomorrow. That's kind of as a teacher, what I wanna uh, give you, something that you can use for your benefit and the benefit of your patients, of course. So let me show you a little few cases to, to kind of guide you through a little bit so you can see the results we're getting with this type of technique. Of course, uh, shade selection is only part of how you get to do really nice resin composite restorations that define detection. Shade selection being the first, maybe cavity preparation being the second one, your layering technique, and your polishings are things that are very important. But today, again, we are going to talk about uh, shade selection. So, this case uh, is a, a pre-op photo. Let me, take, let me show you the possible uh, image there. Um, it's a good case. I think I was very happy. Patient was very happy. Let me show you a second case. This is a case in which the patient comes to me with a old restoration that she's unhappy with this coloration, so I need to change it. So we change the restoration. Let me show you a third case. In this case, this is a young patient in which uh, there is still discoloration because of the history of root canal there. Um, mom is a very young kid, is 12 years old. So, of course, the kid doesn't care much about uh, at that age, but mom is the one that cares, correct? We all know that. So, uh, we're going to be very conservative. We don't want to start with a crown at this young age. So, we're going to do a direct resin composite restoration. We do a little bit of internal bleaching, a little bit of external bleaching to try to uh, bring up that color of that tooth so we don't have to mask it with the composite, and this is the final result. So you might say, well, you know, what all these cases has in common? I think if you really go back a little bit and, and realize all these cases, what is in common is that they, they all blend really well into the structure. And as I mentioned before, uh, the reason why they kind of blend into the structure and disappear and make it look imperceptible it's because we've done certain things to make it happen. One, again, the first thing is shade selection, and that's what I want to talk to you about, correct? The second is bevels that, uh, unfortunately, we don't have time to talk about it, but maybe in the future. The other one is the layering technique that we do to be able to replicate a little bit of the nuances of the teeth, and of course, contouring and polishing. So, talking about shade selection. Let's concentrate this the rest of the time in shade selection. Let me give you some pointers and, and how do I do it in my practice so you can get a good shade selection for every resin composite you do anteriors. But because in the posteriors, we don't really, really select shades. So the very important is the environment. The environment is so important to select the shade, right? Uh, I will definitely will ask females to remove the lipstick and the, if the clothing is too bright, I will need to cover it with a gown or something like that. Because believe it or not, those bright shades and clothing or lipsticks will interfere with a good shade selection. So what we really want is a good environment to select that shade, all right? So the environment, I think, for dental school, we learn about daylight. Which is the best light to select a shade is daylight. Unfortunately, the, the definition of daylight for a lay person that are not expert on color like we are, it's very different than the definition of daylight for an expert. So uh, daylight for us in reality is day that is like a definition, you can read the definition there, is daylight any time during the day. Like if I go uh, from 7, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m., it's going to be daylight, correct? So we think that daylight, okay, that's the best like to select the shade. The problem is that the study that really looked into what was the best light to select shade, they come out with a definition of daylight. 
But this daylight is a very technical definition. What it means is northern exposure sunlight. In, in the middle of the day, that is slightly overcast, is the optimal source. So you understand that really it's in the middle of the day, the sun is on top, so it's not a very good definition because we are not technical persons. As a lay person, this is not good. Unfortunately, in dental school, in dental school that's what we'll learn. So different times on the day will give you different lights. So you put a shade guy under different light conditions, you will get different color, different shade. So it's very, very important to have a source of light that really is constant and throughout the day give us the same source of light, not like day like that changed during the day. So if you see those images, that's a Taj Mahal. What is the color of the Taj Mahal? If I have to repair the Taj Mahal, how I select the shade? Look at that. In the, during the middle of the day, is light blue maybe, white, and in the afternoon, it's orange. So that's my uh, point. This is just illustrate the point that shade is different and it needs to be a good illumination for the shade. Use good light. What does it mean, good light? Well, everybody, we have fluorescent lights, so we need to find fluorescent lights that they say daylight. If we don't have those fluorescent lights, we need to do something like a special equipment that give us that type of headlight. This happens to be the right light uh, too, from a dance, a very good source of light. Turn off your operatory light because this operatory light tends to be incandescent light. That is a color that is going to change the color of your teeth and your shade guide and light is going to produce a mismatch when some does might not be the mismatch between the tooth and the shade guide. Now, what shade are we going to use? Well, let me show you this experiment we did a few years ago. In this experiment, what we had is fine composites of the same shade A1, correct? This is the, we made this of certain thickness, and then we photograph them. And look at this. Every single shade A1 of different brands are very different. So that's why sometimes we get right on with the shade, sometimes we don't get the shade, because every dental manufacturer has a different shade of A1, A2, or all the shades, all right? But at the same time, when you look at the Vitapan shade guide, the most common shade guide that we use for shade selection, what is the real shade one, a shade one, right? If you put a mask, you will notice that the inside side the shade is very different than the middle, and it's very different than the cervical shade, right? That throws us off. So you might say, okay, but oh, I didn't know this. I didn't know the composite didn't match. Maybe some company matches the inside side Some company matches the cervical third. Uh, how do I know? What do I do in my practice to make it look good? So. Um, we need to realize this and make a specific shade guide, a custom shade made guide for the composite you are using. And all these cases you've seen and how we teach at the University of Iowa is to use a personalized shade guide for those particular cases. So I make my shade guide of the material that I'm going to use. So I take an impression, I will, uh, with party material, fill it with a brand of material that I use, I am going to do the shades, the most popular shades that I probably use in my practice. I am going to polish them, and I am going to glue a little maybe uh, uh, metal uh, platform stick in the background and just stick it in putty material and write the name of the shade. And that's the way that I'm going to select my shade because I don't have to go through the Vita Pan shade guide to select a good shade, all right? So the teeth, the shade of the, uh, the teeth that we're selecting the shade they need to be clean, of course. I think we already know this. Um, you have to be um, keep the teeth wet because the teeth dehydrate so fast. So at all times, I ask the patient to lick their front teeth, lick their front teeth when I'm selecting the shade. Be brief. I'm sure it's happened to all of you that all of a sudden, A1 looks good, and then two, three, five seconds later, A2 start looking really good, and B2 and D2, and all of a sudden, all the shade guide looks good. It's because the human nine uh, brain combination only have five seconds to make a good determination. And we need to use this knowledge to select the best shade. So we're going to select the, the shade from the middle of the tooth. That's the most representative area that we have. 
uh, to select the incisal edge is too translucent, the cervical is too red from the gingiva. So we always want to look at the middle of the tab to select the shade. All right. So also arrange your shade guide not by the A, B, C's, and D's. What I want you to do and what we do is to arrange the shade from light to dark. That's the best way you can select a shade. All right, so let me take you now through the process of selecting a shade. We're going to do this by finding the closest match because the human shade of teeth is infinite. We only have 16 colors in the Vita Pan Shade Guy. So we're going to do this by a process of elimination because trying to find a match is going to be very, very difficult. So everybody knows this person, probably most of you know, Mr. Spock, and he used a say, you know, one time ago, a long time ago, I listened to this and it makes sense to me. Once you have eliminated the impossible, whatever remains, however improbable, must be the truth. So I changed it a little bit to say, once you have eliminated the impossible shades, whatever shade remains, however improbable, must be the true shade. But it's not the true shade, in reality, it's the closest shade, right? So how are we going to do this? We're going to have the patient facing down because the light comes from the top. I ask the patient to lick their front teeth. I lift the lip and I go with my shade guy. So let's see it. I want to eliminate shades. I don't want to try to find a match yet. So this is what I do. Lick the front teeth, lift the lip, and I'm going to go with my shade guide like this around, like you can see in the image right now. And then I don't want to select a shade, I want to eliminate. So what I'm eliminating, I am eliminating probably half of these, right? I don't have 16 anymore, I have eight to select. And then I rest my eyes, all right? Because we only have three or four, five seconds to make a determination. So I rest my eyes, close my eyes, look at something maybe gray, and then I ask the patient to lick the front teeth, lift the lip, and I go again, and eliminate again. I don't know thinking which one is the best. Just eliminate, eliminate your shades. Out of these, you can say, I'm going to eliminate the four or the five on, there, on, the, on, the, on the left side, right? So you get maybe three or four that you think about they are the closest one. You close your eyes again, as the patient lick the front teeth, leave the lip, open your eyes, and then you then say, which one is the worst? Which one can I eliminate? In this case, you can see, you can eliminate B2. And that leaves you two, maybe two shades, right? And in the moment you can say, oh, look at this. Close my eyes again, open my eyes, and which one is the worst? And that's eliminate the worst. And this is the one you have left. It's not a perfect match. Most of the time will not be a perfect match. But that's what you have to do to select the shade, right? Because when you have your composite and you have your, made, your shade guides made of the composite, Look what happens. Look at that, close your eyes, open your eyes. Which one is the worst? Some of you are going to say B1, some of you are going to say B2. Again, close your eyes again, open your eyes. Which one is the worst? A1. Which one is the composite you have in your office to do the shade? A2. So that's a very easy, predictable way to select your shade. Do it by a process of elimination. Eliminate, eliminate until you have one possible and it's not going to be perfect because the shade of materials are not perfect. But the other factors like bevel, uh, like blending of the material from thick to thin, are going to help you the rest of the way. So again, that's what you close this one. That's the material you have. That's what you're going to use. Another trips, another t uh, tips for current bridge, maybe cut your the surrounding of your shade guys to look at, look at it better. Let me, this is a very interesting example. Look at this. You have all of them are the same, but they don't look the same because the position of the shade tab will fool you. That's what making your own shade tab is the best. You put your shade tabs in the over, they are going to be too bright, and you put it in the back, it's going to be too dark, right? Things like that, it definitely helps us. A lot of people like to place little tips of uh, a little pieces of composite to select the shade i do not like this and the reason is because i don't want to spend time uh, doing this and also i don't want to spend materials in doing this 
So thank you very much for listening to me. I hope I really, my intention is to show you something that really helps you. You can apply in your practice tomorrow. Thank you very much. Thank you.